Well, good evening. Praise the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in this. Pastor Jonathan McKnight, welcome to our going from this place. It's my heart's desire that you, as well as your family, you are doing well, and God is allowing you to move continually in your purpose and your destiny. No matter what the situation is in your life, around your life, in your family, things that we've known, things that we've seen, perhaps things that we didn't see coming or happening in our life, no matter what has happened, we can grow from that place because of the God we serve. So with that being said, we're thankful tonight. We're getting ready to conclude our series on striving and thriving on tonight, which will be part four. And we're excited about what God is going to say to give us divine instructions so we can keep moving forward into a better position and a better life. Father, we thank you tonight for your love, your mercy, your kindness, and your grace. We're grateful unto you for what you're doing and what you've already done. There is nobody like you, and we're thankful for this opportunity on tonight by which we can be able to once again hear instructions from you. Speak to us. Give us wisdom. Give us knowledge. Give us understanding. We thank you that we're growing in you, and you're going to help us be better now than we've ever been. We pray for those who might be overwhelmed, stressed, grieving, hurt, and we pray tonight that we'll grow from this place. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Tell you what, excited about this. We've been talking for the past few weeks about striving and thriving. We're going to close with a particular scripture, which just so happens to be one of my favorite scriptures that I've been um, quoting and saying and believing for many, many years. But we're going to just kind of go back and look at some of the things that we concluded learning how to strive, understanding that the definition of strive is to make great efforts to achieve or to obtain something, even though it might involve a struggle. It means to fight, to become devoted, and make serious effort. When you are striving, that means you have to have a energy, and sometimes it means working. Sometimes it means working very hard. While we're working and we're trying to move forward, that means many in many cases in life, we are fighting some form of opposition to reach towards a goal. So that brings the question, in this day and time, in this season, in this phase of your life, what are you striving for and why? Do you understand why you do what you do? What is the focused goal, or does your goals shift by the demand of adversity? In other words, when something happens, do you just change your goal, or do you strive to get through that place so you can stay on track with that goal? Sometimes we might not move at that pace we want, but surely... I want to say to someone tonight, adversity cannot move your goal. You might have to pray. You might have to pause. You might have to fast. You might have to become renewed. You might have to be rejuvenated. You might just take an emotional break or a physical break. Never take a spiritual break. We've got to stay connected with God. But my question to you right now is, is are you striving for something? Does it literally bother you when you do not accomplish or you have not accomplished what you're striving for? Do you use adversity as a signal that perhaps I am on the right track? One thing I want to say tonight is just because your goal is being fought or sometimes your aim is being fought, it does not mean that that's not what you're supposed to be doing. It doesn't mean that that this is, must be a sign that this is not it. Sometimes you have to just make it up in your mind. Some things are to be expected, like starting the journey doesn't necessarily mean that everybody that starts with you are going to be with you when you cross the finish line of that goal. Some people will come, some people will go. Some people will support you, some people will not. But you've got to remain striving. Another question 
I want to ask you tonight. What or who has hindered you from wanting to strive or even try? Did they talk you out of it? Or did you talk you out of it? Or did circumstances talk you out of it? What or who is hindering you from striving? You have to keep hope and faith and energy. Hope is so important. Hope is kind of like a fuel that I believe is required that's tied with faith because when there's hope, there's expectation. It's, it's hard to continue to do things when there is no hope. The Bible says hope make it not a shame. For so many times when you're trying to accomplish things in life and you don't do it right away, the enemy starts talking to your mind like you're wasting your time. Why hasn't it happened by now? Or perhaps your focus is on others who seem to be thriving or seem to be accomplishing their goals and you seem to be moving in the adverse or the wrong direction when absolutely sometimes when you go through life, you have to absolutely understand that to everything there's a time and a season. And sometimes it's not the pace. It's the endurance of the race. Let me talk to you a couple of minutes personally for myself. I've gone through a lot of things in life. I've learned a lot of valuable lessons throughout life. Some I never wanted to learn. But life caused me to learn some things about life itself, about people, about me. I think the one thing that if I'm going to tell you you need to learn how to do is not just learn from the experiences that you have encountered in life, but learn the lessons of life. Do you know a lot of people live and never they're so busy trying to get to know others until they forget about who they really need to know or who they really need to focus on. Of course, it is absolutely the number one person that we need to know is God. And it's a constant journey or lesson because he's so diverse. God is so awesome. God is so He's just so many things until we'll never really know him. Matter of fact, I found out about me as I was trying to get to know God. You don't learn yourself overnight. And one experience or two experiences or three experiences in life will not teach you everything you need to know about yourself. You might know your likes. You might know your preferences. You might know your favorite ice cream. You might know your favorite color. You might know some things that you want to do. But one of the things that I found out that will motivate you to strive to thrive is what do you really want from life? And what are you doing to move towards that thing or that place or that mindset of fulfillment. How many times have you went after or gone after things and once you accomplished it, you didn't receive the reward of what you thought. I'm talking about that reward in your soul, in your in, in the indefiniteness of life. I'm talking about the reward of accomplishment that says not only did I accomplish it, it fulfilled my expectations. It's almost like you thought you was going to feel better when you got a new car. It was your dream car. And once you got that car, you didn't get the feeling that you thought probably because every 30 days that car was going to remind you that it wasn't paid for. What happens when you put so much anticipation 
in what you thought was going to make you better. Only to find out you didn't know enough about yourself to reevaluate yourself to see what is necessary. The older I get, the more I understand that it's not things, it's not possessions, it's not houses, it's not land, it's not money. Those things are great. Those things are nice to have. There's something that I found out that makes you thrive. And I'm talking about Jonathan McKnight now. It's called inner peace. It's called loyalty. It's called friendships that don't require receipt. It's called support. It's called love. It's called consideration. It's called respect. Because, see, the reality of life is so many people are trying to get somewhere that they've never been. It's almost like, you know, I love great restaurants. But what is really disappointing to me is to hear people rant and rave about a place, your taste buds are on fire. You just, you just, you've heard so many things about a place. And when you order from the menu, that has this bomb the dot com picture of what you want. And when you order it, the picture creates an expectation. But when the wait staff brings the plate, then you're now dealing with the reality. It's disappointing in life when the picture and the reality now becomes adversarial. What you thought was going to make you happy, what you thought was going to fulfill you, now you got to strive past hope and expectation to deal with reality. That God, what I want to do if I want to be successful first in you, because I know there's nothing about you and your nature and the attributes of who you are that creates false expectation. What you promised, you're going to do. What you promised, you will perform. I might not understand the process. I might not even like the process. But I trust the processor. If you are going to thrive in life, which I'm getting ready to look at this word thrive, you got to trust the processor. You have to trust God's will, God's plan. I'm trying to tell you how you're going to thrive. You're going to thrive, which means to grow or to develop. Many people do not thrive because they never develop. They never mature. I'm just going to say it straight. They are, they're selfish. They're spoiled. It's all about them. They feel like they are thriving when they get their way. They feel like they're thriving when they can manipulate their way. Let me just say it straight wide. When they can try to finesse people and they slick and they think of ways that they can maneuver to get what they want. You're not striving. You're not thriving. You're gaming. The truth of the matter is you can never really thrive when you're the only beneficiary of the success, when you're the only one happy of what you receive because there's something about when you can make someone else's life better. If you don't know how that feel, you need to, you need to learn that life's lesson. You need to learn that life's lesson um, about trying to make others' life better. Um, I was on the FEMA call before I got on this call tonight. 
There's so many people distraught. There's so many people. I heard a story that, uh, this evening that was heartbreaking for a single mom trying to take care of her father who is ill and they're fighting mold in their walls and they've lost everything. And I said, you know, I said, no, I got to do something. Don't even know the people. Got to do something. Because, see, there's something about striving in life to thrive that makes you not be the focal point or you the sole receiver and beneficiary of what happens in life. There's another whole sense of gratification in life that many people never encounter. Nor, and I said this, I said, I don't even want people to necessarily know what's going to happen or what's going to be done. Because I fully understand that if you do it in secret, God will reward you. I don't want, I don't necessarily have to have the trophy. I don't, I don't, want, I don't do it for the plaque. I don't do it for the newspaper. We don't do it for the news. We do it because there are hearts that need people to do it without motive. So if you're going to thrive, that means you have to grow or develop. It means you need to prosper and flourish. That's when you are thriving. And prosperity is not always economics. Sometimes you can make some people rich in hope that there are some good people still here. Or if people do really care. Every person is not just about themselves. There are some people, if you haven't met them in life yet, I've met some, that everything about life for them is about what they can give to themselves or get. The truth of the matter is, is the Spirit of God says this, and if you can take your eyes just for a few minutes or a few seconds a day or maybe an hour or so a day and look at helping someone else. And it doesn't always mean giving the money or handout. How about a check? call hope how about a cash out call support how about encouragement how about consideration how about respect how about putting yourself in someone else's shoes so compassion can rule. So thriving is for things to become out well, to become successful. It means to progress towards a goal despite of the circumstances. And I'm going to give you a motto that I live by life, that I learned this from experience. I learned this from tears. I've learned what I'm getting ready to say to you from um, experiences. I, I learned this through, in many cases, loneliness by choice because you don't want to take another chance on betrayal. I've learned this by being blindsided. I learned this from the unexpected. I've learned this from, I knew you didn't like me, but I'm really surprised about you. I've learned this statement from God processing me. And he wasn't processing me just for me. He's been processing you He's been processing me so you can bring hope to someone.
someone else. When they did not know all the intricate details about your story, but they saw enough to understand you had to strive to get there. You had to fight to get there. You had to you had to cry to get there in many cases. You had to pray. And I'm talking to a whole lot of people right now. Ian, this hurricane turned people's dreams in the state of Florida to a nightmare. This hurricane that when they celebrated their housewarming, and now there is no house, they never knew that. All the designer stuff that happened in your life that you accomplished got washed away and destroyed in one day. The red bottom shoes you were glad about, that Gucci, that Louis, that Chanel, that Burberry, that Prada, that Michael Kors. All of that stuff that you was proud of. And one day, you had to start back striving again. I think one thing that people forget is I'm getting ready to read that scripture. And I'm going to give you this model that I live by. And then we'll close. And that is. Life changes, but God doesn't. It might seem like he's not liking you for a while, or maybe not even you feeling the love from God. But one thing's for sure. He loves us with an everlasting love. He'll never leave us and neither will he ever forsake us. Let me give you a subject I live by that taught me so many valuable lessons in life. And that is you will never know who you really are until adversity shows up. And you'll never really know who's around you until they see your adversity. And your trial forces them to make a decision about you. I did not learn what was inside of me until things start changing outside of me. I'll say it again. I did not know who I really was inside of me until things start changing outside of me. Adversity is a fierce teacher. But it's a necessary one. Because you'll never know who you are. You'll never really even understand your relationship with God. You really won't know who God is until he has to walk you through the valley of the shell of death when he has to take you through some seas or when you want to know why and how and when, how long is this going to be like this? Or when is this going to end? Or why am I going through what I'm going through? He says, I'm teaching you about you. I'm trying to find out how bad you want it. You know, the expression is no pain, no gain, especially if you're an athlete. Or sometimes you have to go through life to say this. We like to use the expression, when all hell breaks out. you got to strive to still thrive. Because sometimes adversity is a divine compliment from God. That he sees something in you that you don't see in yourself. He's making something out of you so you can be hope and encouragement for someone else. But most of all, he has a plan. 
He wants to see, do you believe or trust him? Because you cannot thrive and maintain divine momentum in life if you think you can do it without God, it cannot be done. I can do Philippians 4 and 13. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Let me get to the scripture. And then I'm going to give you two quotes. A scripture that I look at often and I repeat often, even if it appears to not be working. I know the principle of this scripture is life-changing. It's from Job 36 and 11. I can't tell you how many times I've had to read this scripture. It's life-changing. This one verse is a promise. It's a principle. And it's prophetic. I'm going to say it again. It's a promise. It's a principle. And it's prophetic. It says this, Job 36 and 11. Because you know that's the one who had to strive to thrive. Doing well and then lost it, lost 10 children through one windstorm. Lost his relationship. His wife told him to curse God and die. His friends turned their back on him. They started accusing him of doing something wrong. Lost his wealth. But he kept his God. No matter what happens in your life, never let go of the true and living God. Now, Job 36 and 11 says this. If they obey, which means strive to do the will of God and his word and serve him, not just go to church, not just want to be fed, but literally serving him, which you can't serve God and you don't love God's people. You can't serve him just receiving for yourself. Support, mentorship, love, consideration, whatever you can do. If you obey him and serve him, they shall spend, remember I said, you got to understand that there is a promise, a principle, and it's something prophetic. If they obey and serve him is the principle. They shall spend their days in prosperity. That's the promise. And their years in pleasures. That's prophetic. In other words, Prosperity is not always just economic wealth. I wish that you prosper above all things. I, the third job, I, I wish that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospereth. I want you to understand that the greater and the better relationship you can have with God, the better spiritual state you are in, if you obey and serve God, then the prophetic promises of God can come in your life. But you got to strive for it. Sometimes serving God is not just um, in good times. Sometimes there are some days when you look like you have no reason to give God praise. But the Bible says, in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. principle is I'm, I'm going to obey and serve him. The promise is if I do that with the right posture, with humility, with the right attitude, I'll spend my days in prosperity. And not only will he say I spend days in prosperity, he comes right back prophetically and says, and there are years, an extension of wholeness, of happiness, and fulfillment in pleasures. So if you want to strive and if you want to thrive, you have to make it up in your mind. You're going to obey God to the best of your ability, which requires you to be able to have his Holy Spirit that becomes the force 
or the power that allows us to be able to fulfill his word, serve him, serve him, which means sometimes it means that you got to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. You got to, you got to let God know that you're top on the list and then spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. If you take Job 36 and 11, sometimes you got to strive to do it. Sometimes obeying God is not always easy. Sometimes serving God is not always easy because you deal with difficult people. You deal with selfish people. Sometimes you're dealing with envious people or just jealous people. But you still got to serve him. Never allow anyone's personalities, opinion, or feeling about you stop you from serving God. It just ain't happening. So many times people think they can say things or act a certain way and you're just going to change your serving God. Oh, they done bumped their head. Too hard, too hard, too hard. It ain't happening. Relationship with God is the best thing that exists in my life. I'll tell you something right now. I get offended when people start saying things about my God. I, I just do. I switch out. No. He controls our breath. He controls our life. We love him. He's given us more than anything we can get or receive from anybody on this earth. He gave us eternal life. And gave his only begotten son. Let me get out of this. I command you to keep moving forward. I command you to keep trying. I command you to keep believing. I prophetically declare that the light is about to come on again with your dream. Your goals have not died, have not died and neither will your hope. I speak right connections over your life. Speak new doors and new seasons. And I want you to know that God loves you and you're getting ready to thrive. Why? Because you're not going to quit. Quitters don't thrive. You can thrive with no money in your bank account. You can thrive with tears in your eyes. You can thrive when you don't have the gas. You can thrive when you don't even know how you're going to make it because here is the key to thriving. I lift my eyes to the hills from which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. He'll never leave me. He'll never forsake you. I'm going to give you something. Can I give you three quotes? I'm, I know I'm taking longer than what I normally do and I'm getting ready to uh, close this out. first quote that I'm going to say is this. Maya Angelou said something profound. Maya Angelou, woman of wisdom, she said, my mission in life is not merely to survive, but to thrive. And to do so with passion, some humor, and some style. Lord have mercy. I'm going to read that again. Maya Angelou said this. My mission in life is not merely to survive or make it from day to day, but to thrive, to be successful at what I do. But then there's a way I want to do it. I want to do it with some passion. I don't want to accomplish things through hatred, through jealousy, through resentment, or through taking from you for me to be successful. That's not doing it with passion. Then she says, I want to do it with some humor. I want to laugh. I love to laugh. I love to be able to laugh. So some people so deep, so they so deep, they so deep, I don't even want to be around them. They just, they just crunchy. They just starchy. I can do without that. She said, I want to do it with some compassion. I want to do it with some humor. 
And I want to do it with some style. In other words, I want to thrive and no one's embarrassed or offended unless they just choose to be. I want to do it with some style. I want to do it with some respect. I want to do it with some class, not arrogance, not pride, but doing it considering the fact that I know who's allowing me to do it. That's what Maya Angelou said. That's quote number one. I have two more. And I'm going to let you guys go after I pray for you. There's something that I wrote down tonight when I was uh, just kind of going through some moments. This is by George Washington, President George Washington. And boy, this is powerful. It's far better to be alone than in bad company. It is far better to be alone than in bad company. When I read that, I went to Psalm 1. Bless is the man who walked not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the sea of the scoffer, but his delight is in the law of God. And in his law doth he meditate day and night, and he will be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water. Whatever he does, it's going to prosper. I'm not reading it in the scriptures already in my soul. It's talking about right connections. You cannot thrive in life with connections that are trying to decide whether or not they like you or decide whether or not they want to support you or believe in you. Here's the key. It is better to be alone than in bad company. Never be so needy for companionship who are you willing to connect with destruction? That's quote number two. The last quote is going to come from Abraham Lincoln. I tell you what, when I saw this, I was like, I'm done. He says, I walk slowly, but never backwards. I walk slowly never backwards I started this series out with this this one thing I do if I'm going to thrive I got to forget those things which are behind me and I got to reach to those things which are before me Abraham Lincoln said I might not run I might not get to it fast I might walk slowly but I'm never going to be forced to walk back to my past because there's more ahead of me than there is behind you. Thrive, people. Strive and thrive. Other folk might get there before you get there, but it doesn't mean you won't. Just enjoy the journey. Learn the lessons while you're walking with God and get to know him as well as yourself. Father, we thank you for your love, your mercy, your kindness, and your grace, for your good, your God, and your worthy to be praised. There's nobody like you in all the earth. I thank you for your graciousness. Give us the tenacity, the wisdom, the know-how to learn how to strive and thrive. We need your power. The only way we can make it is because of you, Christ. We thank you for restoration. We thank you for refueling. We thank you for you're the potter and we're the clay. We want to be better for you. We want to be better for ourselves and those by which we love. We thank you that the goal and the aim is in reach because of you. We're striving and we're thriving to bring you glory. It's not about us. 
It's not about what we can wear, drive, or accomplish. It's about how we can be better, create hope, and bring you glory. We become the beneficiary of you being our processor. You are the partner. We are the clay. Mold us and make us what you will have us to be. We thank you for favor. We thank you for insight. We thank you for right connection. We thank you that we made it through some things that we learned, and now we're going to grow from this place. Heal those hearts who are broken, those minds who are devastated, those spirits who are fighting, those souls who are aching, those who are sick physically. I pray you touch them and you bless them. Open the windows of heaven and create new seasons and new doors. Give us wisdom and know-how. And thank you, God, that we're going to obey and serve you. And we're committed to living with you and for you for the rest of our life. Bless those families who are suffering loss, those who are overwhelmed, those who are dealing with devastation and grief. We pray that you will cover us, increase us, bless us, and protect us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.